have your attention for just a couple of minutes, please. I have a couple of things I'd like to share with you, which I think would be worth your time and your consideration. The Bible says the heavens declare the glory of God, and all of the earth is full of His glory. Folks, everywhere we look, in all creation, we see the masterpiece of God. We see complexity. We see beauty. We see order. We see intelligence. And folks, when we look into the universe, we see the handiwork of Almighty God. A hundred billion galaxies stretch throughout the universe. And folks, each one of those galaxies contains a hundred billion stars. The Bible says that God names every one of those stars. He calls them by name. And He sets their paths in the heavens. And then, folks, when we look at the earth, we see the glory of God. We look at a single cell, practically a universe in itself, a large city of complex processes taking place that shout of the glory of God. And, folks, Today, science still does not understand everything about a simple little single cell. And then we look around us and we see great whales, and we see birds, and we see fishes, and we see flowers, and we see butterflies, and all of these things designed intricately and perfectly by an incredible, awesome, all-powerful, all-knowing God, and they shout of His majesty the beauty and the wonder of God. And then we have man. Of all the creatures, man is the only one created in the image of God. That God has taken us and created a conscience within us that we understand and know His character. We see God in the creation. We understand Him in our heart and our spirit. And our conscience tells us about His glory, about His holiness, about His justice, about His righteousness, His purity. He's set apart from all creation. And then, folks, within man, within his head, is a three-pound brain. <laughs> folks, the most complex, orderly substance in all of the universe, a hundred trillion connections in the human brain. It shouts of a creator. Folks, science knows next to nothing about all of the processes and all the activity of the human brain. And folks, the Bible says, with all this information, with all of this knowledge, the Bible says, although we know God, we glorified Him not as God. Neither are we thankful, but we become vain in our imaginations, and our foolish hearts are darkened. Professing ourselves to be wise, we change the glory of God into an image made like the corruptible man. We worship and serve the creature more than the Creator. We serve money. We serve pleasure. We serve power and prestige. We serve Darwinism. We serve evolution as our God. And all the things that God has created, we put it aside and we're not even thankful. And folks, one day, this God, this holy, sovereign, all-knowing, all-powerful God, every one of us must stand before and give an account for our life. And all things will come into judgment. Everything that we've ever done or said or thought will come into judgment. And folks, at that day, we'll all be guilty. You see, we've broken God's commandments. We've lied, we've stolen, we've dishonored our parents. We take the Lord's name in vain. We hate our brother. We covet. And the greatest of all the commandments, Jesus Christ said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. Folks, who on this entire planet has done that for a single day? No one. No one. We've sinned against God and we deserve His wrath. But folks, there is good news. 
There is good news. God has not left us in this helpless, hopeless condition. You see, God in His love, in His kindness, in His grace, in His mercy, sent His only begotten Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, both God and both man, to be crucified on a cross. Not for His sins, but for the sins of His people. You see, He suffered, He bled, He died, and He rose from the dead in behalf of the sins of His people. God's anger was turned from sinners like you and like me, and it was placed on the substitute, Jesus Christ. And God crushed Him on that cross. And folks, when the debt was paid, Christ, Jesus Christ cried out with a loud voice, It is finished. It is finished. I paid the debt. And then he died, and three days later he rose from the dead. And folks, there's two things you must do to partake in that gift of salvation. Jesus Christ said, unless you repent, you will perish. You must turn from your sins. Change your mind about the direction you're going. Repentance towards God. And put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord. And you surrender to Him. And you serve Him with all your heart. And you become His disciple. And you listen to His voice and you follow Him. And folks, based on the grace of God, grace on His, based on His gift of salvation of Jesus Christ on the cross, God grants repentance and He grants faith. It's all of God, it's none of ourselves. Folks, God is very close to the humble and He's very distant from the proud and the self-righteous. And I'm gonna challenge every one of you within the sound of my voice before the sun goes down today to get right with God, to turn from your sins and by faith, trust in Him, the Savior and Lord of your life. Folks, I do appreciate your kind attention in these matters, and if you'd like to talk further, I'm going to hang around up here and may God bless you.